Hello everyone, welcome back to another fun episode of Adobe Live. Today I'm really, really excited. We're gonna be doing an interesting workflow. Um, we have our friend Cyrus here. Cyrus, hi. 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 How are How's you? How's it going? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, I'm excited for this workflow. Um, tell us a little bit about you, what you do, uh, because I think the audience is used to seeing like graphic design stuff mm. here on the Firefly streams and we're doing video? Yes, we are doing video today. Um, yeah, so I guess I come from a video like filmmaking background, and I'm very interested in how to use things like Firefly to to not only visualize maybe storyboards, but actually make the film itself, and how we can go about doing that using all these Adobe products. So yeah. Yes, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and hop to your screen, show a little bit okay. of your website where people can connect with you, sure, kind of yeah. see some of your work and get an idea of where we're going. Again, if you're coming from our Discord community, leave a little purple heart in the chat. I know a lot of you uh, pop in there, so leave a little purple heart so we can know that you're there. Yeah, so this is, uh, you can go ahead, go to my website, cyrustavara.com. Uh, this is all my work, both commercial and non-commercial. So for example, like my film here, I would, uh, you know, go check it out. Uh, that's a nonfiction film, but I also did a lot of commercial work, for example, with this company called Curology. And um, and then we did some other stuff down here that's more nonprofit. So I've kind of, my work has touched a pretty large range of different avenues or channels. So that's something I'm pretty grateful about. But um, yeah, that's, I guess, a little bit about me. I won't dive too deep into that. I think that's good. <laughs> um, what are we doing today? Let's talk about your workflow because it is very unique and I'm interested to see um, and kind of explain and then mm -hmm. show it. So yeah, explain yeah. to us what exactly is the workflow that we're going to be doing. Okay, so it is it is a kind of a unique way of doing things using Firefly and Premiere. Uh, and we're not trying to make this hyper-realistic, you know, video of someone doing something sort of bland. Uh, we're trying to infuse a human element actually into our AI workflow. Uh, so what we'll be doing is using Firefly, the text to image, to generate lots of different images that will then animate in Premiere. Um, so that's that's basically the gist of it. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I could go into like sort of why. Let's do it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Why? Yeah. That so, is a good question. <laughs> you were like, just film it. And you're yeah, like, why yeah. are we doing why, it this way? Uh, yeah. So I guess some context for you all. Why am I I using uh, Firefly and Premiere in this sort of way? So a little bit of context. I'm making a film right now. It's about the first Japanese settlers to the U.S. And this is like true story sort of thing. And um, and I don't have a way to visualize it. And so I started using Firefly to see like, oh, what can I do with this? So basically it's, uh, we'll be looking at, we'll be creating content for that film, for a scene of that film uh, to be used as an example for us today. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Yes. Yeah. Frame by frame. Frame by frame. Yes, yeah. which is gonna be really cool. So. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about how that works. I think that like okay. explaining it is like, oh yeah, totally. But then you think about it, I'm like, how though? Uh, how do we actually make that happen? Okay, should I like go through yeah, it? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's hop okay, into it. Let's hop in. Okay, so the first thing I would say before we really dive in is like when you're using something like Firefly, I think it's really great to have some sort of concept or story even that you have in mind. Because uh, you can make this you know dog playing a guitar like that's great love that content but can you go further than that um, can you make can you make a story out of the images that you're generating and that's like where it really that's where the magic sort of happens for me so we'll be using Firefly in this way uh, so for example in my uh, scenario of this film there's a lot of actual samurai in in that story that I'm working on so that's one thing that I would want to see. Like, what can I do with Firefly in generating this content? So I guess I can just go ahead and do that. Yeah. So I'll just type in Samurai. That's like, that's all I know right now. So let's just type that in and see what happens. Um, and while it's doing that, prompt is too short. So it gives me a little thing and then yep. it gives me these generated images. So before I get to the images themselves, uh, this little, you know, uh, these fields on the right hand side here, uh, I want to change that to 16 by 9, right? So that's going to give me a little bit wider of a screen uh, for video, obviously, um, for horizontal video, I should say. And then I'm going to change this as well to photo. Oop. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. OK, OK, hold on. Yeah, the, <laughs> there, there we, we go. go. Okay. Got it. We got there together, Chad. It was <laughs> yeah. a journey, but we made it. Um, 
And then now it's going to generate something that's a little bit more photorealistic, if you will, but still you'll see that it's like not totally. And these these images are not what I have in mind, like at all. So so I want to I want to hone in my prompt. Yep. And with one word, you're never going to get what you want, really, or even like an inkling of what you had in mind. So I have to write some descriptors in here. So I would say maybe samurai, and what's the background? Like samurai in, oops, in a forest, for example. So let's just see what that does for us. And I'm just going to show you, like, kind of working up to what we really want. Yes, that's, mm -hmm. and I think that's the best way to get good images is to go word by word and just keep building. Mm -hmm. uh, start small and then get larger and larger. Um, and it is important that you saw that there was, like, spelling error. If there's a spelling error, it's going to give you wild results or no mm -hmm. results at all because it's not recognizing it as a language that it can interpret. So make sure your spelling is on point. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Pun intended. <laughs> so, um, so Samurai in a Forest, okay, this is kind of getting somewhere. We have a background, ni nice. Uh, our characters, our main characters here, aren't really what I'm thinking of in, in the story that I'm working on. They are male, uh, they come from a specific region, which I don't know if we'll be able to get, but it's an interesting characteristic. And also there's certain things that I want in this image. For example, there was a war going on. There was a civil war in Japan going on at the time. This was 1860s, actually. And so I want to somehow depict these scenes. So uh, let's add those uh, descriptors to our prompt. So I'll say, um, let's see what this comes up with. Japanese samurai, uh, maybe male in a forest. Cool. Let's just see what that does. And we can go from there. Often I find that using tools like Firefly, text to image especially, you're really trying to whittle something down and focus it in. Again, you're never going to get that, that perfect prompt or that perfect generation the first go around, which is totally fine. And I think it kind of comes back to how strong is your concept. Um, if you have a strong concept, you can really focus in on that and get some really interesting results. If the concept is a little bit more haphazard or, or it's not there at all, then your generations will kind of maybe reflect that. So anyway, um, so cool. We're getting some we're getting somewhere, yeah. I think. Yep. Uh, that's nice. We got all males here, which is good for for the story that we're trying to tell uh, in this scene. I would say we can do a little bit more than this, and then I'm going to ask all of you what what we where should we go from there? Because there's some other tools embedded in here that we need to use. So, one guidance guidance rule for me is I need a group of them, a oh. group of Japanese samurai males in a forest. Okay, let's just see what that does. I'm interested to see what it does with groups to see if it's going to generate like individual people. And also, of course, you know, we can play around with the composition. So you can say, actually, I want it to be a wide shot or a close-up shot. Or okay, like this is we're getting somewhere for sure. Um, out of these, maybe I don't know. What what do you all think? Which one should I pick? And how do we how do we do that? Like, Chat, this do is we like, like one, one two, which is top left? Yeah, two, three, or four. Do we have any people that want to? One, two, three, or four. There's a little delay, so we, delay. we talk. Okay. I know, it's so fun. Um, so when you're working with these, yeah. do you know where you're going when you start? And you're like, here is like kind of the image that I want in the end. Or do you ever like on your way to the end get sidetracked? And you're like, oh, this image that I landed on is better than where I thought I was going. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of sidetracking for sure, um, definitely. So I think that's something that's like the black hole of generative AI that you can kind of get into. Uh, <laughs> but I would say like especially for this project, it's very specific. So I, I have a script that I'm that I wrote and that I'm trying to figure out like, okay, what scenes do I need? and what is the action in the scene, and how do we get there. So it is, in that sense, it's very specific that I'm, I'm looking for something very specific. Um, oh, did we get some? Yeah, we've got two, two we've got a one, one. Okay. we've got one. Votes are starting to come in here. Let's see. Because we are, OK, refresh, please. Oh, oh, do a refresh. Oh, interesting. So they, they don't even like the... These, I know, someone's like, right. none. <laughs> none. None of none. the Let's above. just see. Let's just see, Let's see what, what happens. happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> none. <laughs> I like that Get one. Get out. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. 
So, and then from here, we're gonna do a little bit more prompting, but then we're also going to feed the image in on itself. Yep. I do like the bottom left. This one? Yeah. Okay. Feels cool. dynamic. Cool, cool. So we'll go with that. But I want to maybe use this image at, in the AI software, if you will, or algorithm, to generate other images that are similar to it. So that's going even further. So this is at the point where you're like, I really love this image. There's something about it that's amazing. It's working for me. But I need either more of them, which we'll get to in a second, um, or I need to riff on it. Right, like a musician would. Like yep. I just need to take that original idea and just kind of riff a little bit to get to what I want. So in order to do that, you can just hit these little, uh, this option uh, ellipses here, and then use as reference image. So that'll generate some more images for me based on that one that we just clicked on. And what's cool is you saw the little slider pop up for a second. Um, mm -hmm. The slider actually can tell you how much you want of the source image and how much you want of new images. So you can use that slider to kind of go back and forth. Yeah, that's a really good point because I think, um, I don't know, actually, I don't know how to get that slider back. Uh, bottom left, I think you hover over the image. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yes. So I can change that to go more towards the prompt. Uh, right now, our prompt is exactly the same as what we had before. So this is where I would want to change my prompt, like tweak it a little bit to include the stuff that I don't think is actually here. So you can see these images are very similar to what our original reference image is. So that's cool, right? Um, but I want to add some more stuff. For example, there was a war happening. They're not just standing around. <laughs> so I want to <laughs> simulate pose. that. Yeah, just yeah. pose for a little bit. So a group of Japanese samurai males um, battling, let's say, in a forest. Mm, yeah, that's uh, on fire. Oh, fire forest. So let's see what that does for us. I'm very interested in the evolution of these images of where we're going to like end up landing. OK, some of them are on fire. Some of them are on fire. Uh, Unintelligible a little bit, but you can see how Using that reference image, we're getting something that is close, which is cool. And again, we'll go into why in a second. But um, but also, it's added so many other layers. So OK, like this is cool. I could even say, I like this one. And let's use that one now as a reference image, because I really like that. And I can even kind of put it in, uh, do, a, do a little feedback loop here. It'd be really cool to have a history of like, everything that, like, until you got to the final yeah, image, yeah. just to see, like, oh, here are all the steps that I made. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, you can get some pretty wacky stuff. Uh, but then, like this, this is, like, getting close to what I'm thinking, like, oh, actually, this can play out in the film. Now, one other tweak that I want to make before we really start generating our images is the forest. So the forest is great. I love that. It's just something random that I said earlier on in the stream. So what I actually want is a castle. Um, so, oh. so let's say in a um, Japanese specifically castle. Oh, which is interesting that we have all the elements and the styles that we've looking that we're, we've been looking for. That like we've landed on that destination. Mm -hmm. Now let's change the elements in the scene of going back, changing yeah. just like little details here and there. Yeah, exactly. So we can generate that. See what that does. Generation time. Generation time. And right now, it, we're basically at 50% between reference image and prompt. So, Which if, is probably where we want to be once we've locked in the style we want, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's really working hard for us, so that's good. Um, this is a very detailed prompt. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. Um, pretty cool. Wow. This is looking pretty cool, actually. I'm liking a lot of what's going on here. And you'll notice, because, again, we have that reference image, so take a look at our figures are in roughly the same place. If I want that to be even more, if I want them to be closer to where they were originally in the reference image, then, of course, I can go here and dial it a little bit back towards the reference image. And you'll start to get more matches. Yep. Um, that Which will probably be like a palace in the woods. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, it's, yeah, it, it'll yield some really beautiful results. If you, for some reason, don't want that, 
and you want them to be different, we can go all the way towards the prompt. Now here, our prompt is exactly the same, again, <laughs> as what we used our reference image for. So I could change that and kind of go there. Again, this is the black hole of generative AI. So yep. And someone's saying, I'm surprised battling didn't yield results that would trigger blast blacklisted prompts. Yes. Uh -huh. I actually was a little bit surprised about that, too, uh, because there are pretty tight content filters. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that it's interesting that like we got there to a point to where like it's not over the top, but it is able to depict the image that you want. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely run into those restrictions, I guess, but you can like work around them a little bit with the language that you use. You know, language is powerful. So especially you, when you're trying to tell a story like this, yes, where like yeah. you need some of those elements. Yeah, yeah. So again, I can use that one because I really liked this one. Um, I, and agree. I might Yeah, <laughs> I might change it here and there, the prompt itself. But um, let's just say I really like that. Um, right now, we're still going pretty far on the prompt. So I'm going to dial this back a little bit because that's going to help us when we try to animate these images. So from here, after we get this group of images here, OK, this is great. Um, I, I want to use these. Like Now I'm at a spot where, OK, these images are actually good enough to be in the film. Yep. They're going to show a certain scene in a certain way that I think is going to be great. So I'm actually going to start downloading these images. And you literally just go ahead and download them all. Uh, one by one here. I don't think there's a batch download, at least not yet. So you just download those. And you do this process. You refresh. And you do it again, and you do it again, and you oh, do it again. Oh, interesting. So you're saying the same prompt and just refreshing mm -hmm. to get however many frames you need for that scene. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be dealing with a 24 frames per second uh, timeline or sequence. OK, that's helpful. Yeah, <laughs> Lower yeah. frame rate. <laughs> Lower frame rate. It <laughs> it's could a be stylistic lower choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's ways to like y get more out of it, too, uh, if you need it. but. The reason being, and you'll see this uh, when we go into Premiere, is because you know we want these figures, for example, like this dude here looks monstrous. We want that person to be in roughly the same position, but a little bit different, so that there is movement. Eventually, when we yep. animate it, there will be movement that happens. Again, we're not trying to make a photorealistic or hyper real video. This is going to be totally weird, OK? So just so you know. Uh, but that's the point, I guess. Um, so yeah, so now that we have that, I'm just making sure, surprise battling, OK, yeah. So I'll just go ahead and download more and more. All right, so we got those. Those are all going to my downloads folder. So we're at eight now. We're at eight, so we need cool. Th three more? So we need three more. 16, got it. And I'm just going to generate them. You'll notice, too, actually, on the right-hand side, I'm not really using a lot of this stuff over here. I happen to be getting the stuff that I want not having to put in these fields. But you could, of course, use some of these um, palette knife, layered paper, things like that. Uh, color and tone, lighting, composition. These are just, like super helpful, especially when you're trying to get a, a first look. Uh, and then, or you want to get that reference image. And then you could even use the reference image and then take those fields off. So there's so many different combinations that you can use within Firefly. So I should, I should do this now and focus. <laughs> You'll see. Download, yeah. download, download. <laughs> Just keep going. OK, cool. So I have prepared already some, some of these okay. so that you know, we don't have to do, sit here and watch me do this for the rest of my life. But I do like that we will be able to see like a one that we actually did together. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I love that we have some baking shows so we can show you like a full clip or whatever. But we also can show you we did this together and this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So we'll do one more and I think we'll be able to understand what it's actually doing. Yes. So I'm, cool. so, ex are, I'm so excited to see. These are awesome generations actually. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I agree. When we kept generating, <laughs> when we hit this one, I was like, if he doesn't pick that first one, it's over. <laughs> so let's see uh, how many we have here. OK, yeah, we have, we have enough here. And you can see, actually, just by looking at it in my Finder, you can just do a little, oh, see, there's so cool. something happening there, right? And if yeah. you go really quick, it, it strobes. But you can kind of see what's going on. Yep. And that's a good way for you to see, like, oh, OK, are my frames actually working for this? That fire is yeah. looking great. Um, so yeah, so let's just say we're OK with that. 
I'm just going to, I'm a stickler for organization, so. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to. Please look away from my desktop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chat so chat let's screaming. Just do Adobe Live uh, demo or something like that. So cool. Now we have all of our images in there. Um, I'm going to open up Premiere, which I already have open. And let's just do not a new project. I'm going to, this is my whole project, by the way, and I can get into that in just a second after I do this. So let's do. Pull that in. So now we have all of our images. Okay. So that's good. Um, I'm just going to use another uh, sequence that I have here prepped uh, for us. So I'm just going to put those, all of those, into this sequence. Cool. And I'll zoom in here. So now we have our sequence. Uh, we can take a look. It's not moving. Well. <laughs> because each frame is too long. Yes. So that's maybe the first thing that we can do. Is we want each frame to be a frame. Yeah, exactly, a frame. In this case, I want them to be two frames. OK. And you'll see why. Um, so I'll do Command-R to retime it. And I'm going to do two, because you could do one. And it's th the effect works. You know, It works really well, actually. Yep. I, in my opinion, it almost works too well, where it's like too fast. Yep. So I'm going to do two. Uh, ripple and edit shifting trailing clips and say OK. Now you can't barely see it, but there and it is. And can we push uh, Premiere at full screen? Oh, yeah. So oh, sorry about that. The yeah. whole view, CinemaScope. Is that OK? Yes. Yeah, OK. Duh. OK, so now let's play that. OK. Cool. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> so we're getting somewhere. Uh, of course, we have these, uh, you know, there'll be black bars, you know, kind of framing. Don't want that, so we can change that. Going to the scale, um, I'll scale it up just to like full screen. So 109, cool. I'm going to copy that one. I'm kind of working fast here. So if you have any questions, please go into the chat. I will paste my attributes and just do motion. Say OK. So that means that all my clips now are the same size. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So yeah, so that's kind of the foundation of our scene. So that's usually how I'll go about it before I move on, move forward with processing, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and then I'll go on to the next scene and see what I can do. Or I'll look at this one and say like, oh, actually, I, like, I don't like this one. So I'll just either take it out or replace it with a new one. Or That's why it's always handy to keep your, you know, your, your prompt going, because yep. uh, then you can kind of go from there. And do you ever have a time where you need more time on something? Do you ever loop it, like take this one and then loop again? Because it's each one is unique. It would be hard to notice. Or even mm -hmm. just like mixing up the order, or are you always generating new ones for each individual frame? I like new ones. Okay. So that you just can't, there's no, um, there's no loophole that someone could say, is that, did we see that already? Yes. <laughs> or is that another one? Or, or if it's in the motion when you have a repeated frame, sometimes you can tell. Yes. I right? always look for that when I see a movie that has like noise over it. Uh, I uh, went to go see Skin and Marink, which is like a horror movie that's like an independent filmmaker and had noise over the whole movie. And I remember like seeing a piece of noise and being like, is that looping? And then I'd see it again and uh, I was like, it's looping. And I'm like, oh, dang it. And that's yeah. all I could think about is the noise just looping. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it takes you out for sure. Yeah. So. So yeah, um, anyway, we're, we're at a good place. And we can start generating new scenes, of course, if you need to. And we will uh, after this whole little demo on this scene. So just hold your horses. But um, so let's just take a look at what this looks like right now. OK, very short. Now what we need to do, and this is <laughs> This whole process, I should caveat, is like just my own personal process. It's not, I'm not saying it's a right or wrong. So you can do whatever you want, really, in this whole thing. Uh, these are hopefully just kind of like inspirational guiding points for you. In my process, I like to kind of start to blend these images together in a way, in multiple oh, different ways, actually. Okay. So that the animation that happens, the so called stop motion that's happening, is a little more smooth. But it's still not going to be smooth like what you might think of as what you see like generative AI examples. Yes. So, so one way to do that is transitions, right? So we can, of course, go into our transitions and 
like what do we have? I'm gonna just go to like cross dissolve, for example, or film dissolve is another one that you can use and just put that there. You can also do command uh, D and it'll kind of put them on all of them. Maybe I can, oops, that's a little preview. <laughs> do that and bump these out, okay. So now, okay. Oops. A little smoother. A little smoother, a little smoother. That's a different image that we'll get to in a second. So yeah, we can start to see they're starting to blend, blend together, which is great. Some transitions, if you want to use, they have different uh, attributes that you can actually you know, start to tweak. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to use a regular cross dissolve in, in this example. And it's like pretty cool when you yeah. start to scrub. It's like looking alive a little bit. Uh, then from there, again, you can kind of, this can be it. Sometimes that's all I do and, and it's great. Another way to do it is to nest all of these. So select all of them mm -hmm. first. Um, right click or two finger click um, and you'll go to nest. And I'll just call this demo. And are we gonna stabilize? What? I'm, you sorry, can. I'm asking, okay, yeah. I, I'm very interested, so I'm just asking, okay, show me, take, yeah, yeah, take no. me on the journey. You can definitely stabilize this footage, but at the same time, it's like, what are you stabilizing? That's Cause true, because everything's pretty not stable. Moving. Yeah. You know, the camera isn't moving. So, but I think there are probably images and generations that you can make that have a moving effect of a camera. And in that case, maybe you could stabilize. In our case here, so here's our nest, right? Here's our new nest, all of our clips are right in there that you can't really see because they're so small. Mini clips, <laughs> our frames. But, uh, anyway, so there's so many things now that it's a nest that you can do with this. One thing is retime it, right? So I can retime this again and say, I want to go at like 85% or I can use the uh, retiming you know, tool of my cursor and just kind of drag it out uh, or drag it back in to make it faster. So, okay, that's interesting. What I'm more interested in, though, is retiming using optical flow. Okay. Tell so me more. Once you use optical flow, I don't know really what's happening under the hood. It's like flowing the, optically. Yeah, it's yeah. flowing. The optics are flowing. Yeah. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so kind of what's happening under the hood is what I think is happening is at least it's getting, let's say you have two frames only. And those frames are different from one another because they're time-based medium, right? So what optical flow is doing is kind of estimating what goes in between those frames. And it's creating those, fr those in-between frames for you. So it's not always right. It doesn't always get things right. There's a lot of um, artifacts that you can get from it if you don't shoot in a way that is made sort of for optical flow. It's not optical flow's fault. It's just the way that we try to use that tool. But what I found is it's fun to break optical flow. Uh, and use it for those artifacts that you might get. So in our case, um, I'm going to make sure that we can render here. And yeah, while it's doing that, like you can do, uh, for me, just so everyone sees it, is I stretched it out, meaning I'm making it slower than it actually was to begin with. Um, and I am using optical flow in order to interpolate all those frames that are in between that I've now like stretched out. So is it in theory adding frames in between those frames? It is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you don't see those like in your sequence. Yes, but in like but visually. Yeah, visually yeah. that's what's happening. Um, and so let me actually just do that and we can loop it here. In and out points, baby. In and out points. I'll do that. So okay, okay, that's cool. We can we can go a little further and play around with optical flow a little bit. Eight, Seventy-five, maybe let's do like eighty-eight, something like that. A little more. We'll have to re-render, but that's okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Keeps going to the front. Oh, that's interesting. Are there two in and out points? No. Oh, um, it's just interesting. Okay, okay, maybe I'll try to put this full screen. Oh wow, that's we like got it. really full screen. Oh, there okay, we there we go. So this is looking pretty cool, I think. I'm, I'm starting to be really happy with, with the effects that we're getting. This guy's on fire, 
So that's the other guy's on fire. So there's kind of like things like that. But and I like the fire stays in the right spot. Yeah, like, yeah. Like yes, it's weird yeah. that they're on fire, but it also is cool that it's like tracking with their leg or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And like the the castle in the background and all of that is is sort of staying consistent. It's like we're getting a really for me, it's like a really interesting effect that's yep. happening here because you can see what's happening. Yeah, and, and even the weirdness of again, because this is like intended to be this kind of surreal look, I love the people in the background going from like oh, yeah. warriors to people to bushes to mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that it becomes this very surreal moment of yeah. like almost like dreamlike state, which I think is yeah. really cool. And we were talking maybe before we went live, but about this interpretation a little bit that you can have. And I think with at least the work that I like to make, there's a lot of back and forth between like me, the maker, and the audience who's ever watching it. And I like that. I like that there's this ambiguity about the image. Um, and with AI, I think there's a lot of ambiguity that you can put into your images for sure. Yeah, I think it lets your mind wander instead of like paying attention to exactly what's on screen. It's giving you like the idea of a concept and then it lets you like wander in that, which I think is really cool. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. That's great. I love I, it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of what's happening here. <laughs> it's awesome that you're picking up on that. So that's great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so now that we have that, uh, I'll just show you like real quick, if, if we go even quicker, what does that look like, you know, just so you have an idea of what we're doing or what optical flow is doing. So I'll go like pretty quick here. Uh, I wonder if it'll do it for me. Oh yeah, it kind of does. So it's it's a little bit more unintelligible, right? But it's still a cool effect. I mean, maybe you have a long scene and you can, it's a little more scanner darkly here. Yeah, and I think <laughs> too, if you're doing a scene depending on the mood, right, that maybe if it's in battle, this would be more appropriate yeah. mm -hmm. than the frame rate that was happening at the other one, right? Mm -hmm. That you can really, because I could see something going from that slower frame rate into an action sequence or something that is this, that becomes that like, yeah. bah, 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 and it yeah, just, yeah, like yeah. the visual difference is so mm -hmm. overwhelming that it like really gets the story going. Yeah, yeah, so, um, and going back to, that's, um, don't want to make you sick or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> going back to Firefly, um, I think this is where, you know, especially what you were pointing out here, this little fader, um, you know, if I want more of my reference image or more of my prompt, I can start generating images because now I know in Premiere, like how it's sort of working, how my images are playing off of one another. Let's say for example, I really like this, the motion is good, but they're not in the same sort of spot that I want them to be in. So that means that we would probably need to have more weight on our reference image. Uh, so that it's closer to the reference image and like, you know, the clothes that they're wearing is closer, the castle looks closer, more identical to the reference and all those kinds of things. Um, if we want to go further, then we just adjust it to the prompt and it'll start spitting out some really cool stuff, but it's, it's going to be uh, a little further away from our reference image. Um, yeah, so that's, that's that. This is such a cool workflow. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm really excited. This is, it, it's, it's really, really interesting, especially for someone who is not necessarily like, uh, it feels very accessible to people that have mm -hmm. ideas that don't know how to execute them. This is a very like accessible way to do that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an accessible thing. I'm all about accessibility when it comes to making your actual work. I think uh, oftentimes too, filmmaking can be pretty inaccessible. Mm -hmm. So this is a way to, yeah grant that access to a lot of people. So anyway, um, I will kind of jump over to a sequence that I prepared for this specifically that basically takes whatever we just did and kind of uh, amplifies it to a whole scene. So back here, you'll notice that I have my images that I generated and they're still big and long and, um, and way too lengthy in time and all that. So. Here it is though, right? Here's my scene, I'm kind of going through them. It looks cool, it looks similar to what we just did. Um, you can notice as I scrub through that I was putting more em emphasis on the prompt mm -hmm. just to see what would happen, um, to see like what happens when I start to try to animate these frames that are close but very dissimilar. Um, so yeah, so that's what I started with. And then I moved on to animating them more accurately towards what I needed. And so this is, I'll just play the whole scene while we talk about it. So 
we got a little forest in there. We got a little oh castle in gosh, there. Oh my gosh, the fight! And we got a f we we switched to a f duel, right? That's crazy because you probably aren't changing the prompt on that at all, right? Of the duel, it I did. Just is, you did. Is I changed it? it. Yeah, I Sorry. changed it from a group to yes. I think two. I said I distinctly said two. Okay. Uh, samurai, you know. Are you changing it within those two, or is it just literally like the generations are? Because it looks like they're fighting. Were you oh, putting yeah. in like, or is it just like, oh, the the generations? I have the original prompt of fighting, and then each one is different, and so the swords are moving, so it looks like they're fighting. So I did the same thing that I did before, which I used. I found a good one that they were dueling, and then used that as a reference, and then output more generations based That's on so that cool. reference. That's cool. So, and especially for something like a duel, it's perfect because each one's different, so it gives you that like, action ding, ding, ding. Yeah. without having to do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So battle, I think this battle is looking good. Like, there's a lot of arm movement, there's a lot of body movement and swords and all of that. And then once we get to the duel, it's like, yeah, there's definitely something happening here. And like that person said about the, the battle, um, <laughs> the battle word and, like, trying to get those prompts, yeah, I, you just have to kind of work your way around it and see what you can generate. Uh, so now, okay, so that's my scene. It's pretty, still pretty raw in its raw state. No transitions, no nesting, none of that. No okay. logical flow. Uh, then, Ugh. okay, <laughs> then... I need well, an adult, I'm stressed. <laughs> there's this sequence, okay? okay? So before, I'll just show you how I got here, right? Just briefly, again, just to recap. So I took all these, uh, did Command-D. I'm on a Mac, by the way, so Command-D. Uh, might be Control D on a on a PC. I'm not sure, but to add all the cross dissolves in between all my uh, frames. So okay, you know we're we're getting some cross dissolves for yep. sure. It's helping us, I think. Then from there, of course, you do your nest. Mm -hmm. Oops. I'll just say okay. So there, I have my nest. That's great. Time. Then let's retime it. And for, again, however long you think is good. I usually say for, for this specific workflow, 80s, around the 85% mark is usually pretty good. Um, and then, of course, you can render it. Oh, wait, render entire work area. Optical flow is like that. You have to render quite a, quite a bit because I think there's just a lot happening. So, okay, so let's say that like I really like that and I want to move forward. So, these are my nests, right? I have two different nests here for the different scenes. There's the duel, and then there's the battle. Yep. And then I have a bunch of sound effects. Sweet. So sound effects, I'm not going to go in and add all these now. Uh, yeah, I will put... I, mean, so I got my headphones because, so, headphones. chat, you can hear all the fun that happens. We usually can't, and so we have headphones in the studio, which makes me really happy because I'm excited to be immersed in this story. <laughs> so basically what I've added were some sound effects, some environmental, ambient noise sort of sound effects, battling sort of stuff, um, swords clashing. Um, so I'll show you some of those just soloed. Hopefully the volume is right. Okay, so that's that. There's uh, some clinging noises. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Okay, so cool. Don't ask me how I got these sound effects, okay? So now we can just watch the whole thing with all the sounds. So cool. So, once you introduce sound, it's like, that's when it blows open, yeah. I think. Yeah, and, and th this is like, th I'm so bad at giving compliments, but it, it <laughs> gives me that like, very high-end like museum experience of like the sound design mm -hmm. with the imagery, like trying to take me back to somewhere that like I couldn't have possibly been. Uh, the combination of those two is just so good to give you and like take you back there mentally without having to like show you visually. Yeah, yeah. It's really uh, I mean, cool. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. Um, I think with this particular story and especially things 
in the past, right, in, in history, it's hard to visualize them in, in any way, no matter what, not even generative AI, just like how do I visualize the past? And I think using things like Firefly, it's like you can do so much with it and there are so many creative ways that you can visualize history um, in, in a way that kind of can put you both in it, but also there's like an emotional component to it. There's like so much more of this other stuff of, of the, the magic of filmmaking in there. Yep. Um, which is, that's sort of what I really love about it. So, um, you know, you saw here in this example that there's some optical flow going on. I can always adjust those kinds of things if I don't like this. If I don't like this entire scene, oh, whoops, I can just regenerate it and, and have that new. At least I have my sound effects intact. Um, so there's all that. I'm not doing anything crazy with the sound effects, just so you know, um, if you go to the track mixer, I have things like denoise, some reverb, some parametric EQ, and all that kind of stuff. So if you want in the chat to go over sound, let me know. Um, I can kind of go over that. But uh, I also went over that in my other stream, so you can take a look at that. There's You have content. Yeah. You're building a library, <laughs> yeah. a content library. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, now that we're there, um, that's our scene, right? Like, let's just say that we really love that, and like, that's kind of our scene, that we're done with that scene, and we can move on to the next one. And so for me, it's just referring back to my script, saying what do I need, what scenes do I need, and how am I gonna get there, and what do I have in mind? And then going for those prompts and seeing what kind of is generated. And then, like you were saying, sometimes that changes, like what I had envisioned. Actually, that's not what I want anymore. Uh, based on my process, now I want X, Y, and Z. So you can just generate some new prompts. Um, so that's that. Are there, do you have any questions on this part? Because I'm going to move forward. I'm still like getting my head around it. It's, <laughs> it is just so cool. I'm just long for the ride at this point. Okay, okay, uh, cool. Yes, take us, take us wherever we need so to go. So here's another way to use it, which is the same process, but dialing in a little bit the, I guess, the, the way the animation is moving. So in this case, for example, using this one, uh, we have some figures, right? They are in a battle, but what are they doing? They're like kind of flailing their arms a little bit, and the general positioning of these figures, of our subjects in this frame, isn't really moving too much, as we can see, right? But they are moving. So luckily they're aligned because I used them as a reference image and we got kind of different generations based on that. But I can go back here and say, there's another point in my story where these samurai actually become farmers in California. And if you want, oh, yes. please reach out to me on Instagram <laughs> to talk about this because I'd love to talk about this thing. But they became, in real life, these ex-samurai became farmers here in the States. Oh. So maybe I want to generate that. Uh, wow, this one. I was going to say bottom. Mega like, Samurai. What is happening like, yeah, in that's, that one? That's the, uh, <laughs> the Power Rangers <laughs> end of the episode. <laughs> like, Growl! Mecha Samurai. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK, so maybe I want to generate you know, a Japanese uh, farmer uh, portrait. I want it to be, because uh, at the time, 1860s, 1870s, daguerreotypes, right? Oh. My gosh, you are the only person I have ever heard talk about degrowth. I took I taught photography history for oh, really? like ten uh, okay. years. Okay, okay. And so just coming out of nowhere, that is so exciting. Do you want to explain what a daguerreotype is? Oh man, I mean, you're probably better at it than I am. It's okay. a really f early form of photography. Yes. And yeah, I mean, that, that's yes. It's yeah, a really yeah. early form of photography. It has a very signature style. Yeah. No color. Um, it yep. was like near almost beginning of photography. Mm -hmm. And so if you think of like a tin type photo, is probably the more like visually recognizable. Yeah. Uh, that it's very high contrast, um, low quality, high contrast. Uh, with kind of this like ethereal feel to it. I feel like daguerreotypes always feel very like airy whenever I see them. Um, wow, thrown out. And again, I think this is so important to know history, especially with Firefly and AI and stuff, to be able to like get specifics. Mm -hmm. That like you want this idea of an image, it's probably happened in history and you can reference something very specific mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. get that. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I was so excited. Okay. Yeah. I just got so stoked that I'm <laughs> no, like, that's so awesome. I know what a Jigurotype is. Yeah, I think those specifics are really key because I think we're early on in like our AI sort of journey, right? So sometimes you might not get what you want and all that, but it just like gets better and better as we move forward in time. So the technology is gonna get even better and those specifics are really what makes your concept unique or what you can do to make your concept unique. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so I have here a Japanese farmer portrait daguerreotype standing with a tea farm in the background. So let's just see what that generates for us. And I'm not using a reference image anymore uh, for this. I want it to be totally different uh, for this particular and this is such a niche thing, chat, for you're like, what does that look like? But I, like, in my brain have what it is going to look like with the Dugar type of a farmer. Uh, and I'm very interested to see what it generates. Okay. 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 Okay, okay interesting. I, I like that we both had the same reaction that it's like... <laughs> it's not it's, a Dugar It's not a Dugar <laughs> uh, Let's see here. Well, what can we do? Japanese farmer portrait, Dugar type. I would I'm maybe do, like... this out, actually, portrait. Yeah. I would maybe do like um, what I want. I like I would want more of like a pictorialist, like soft focus. Maybe would help. Um, let's see what this does. I could take out the tea farm, perhaps in the background, and then add that later once we get a good reference image. Oh yes. Oh, that's interesting to get pieces. Yeah. And then build using the reference of the. Uh, yeah. Oftentimes I find myself like positioning the the subject of the frame first and then using that as a reference image and then telling it to do something else. So these definitely aren't daguerreotypes. I'm very like surprised by that. Yeah, the top right one has similar Let's see if we can do like this. Oh yes, 18 so actually time periods are pretty good for getting certain zones. So let's just see. And I'll just use whatever is here just for reference, and I will show you what I generated before. I should have saved that prompt, actually. I'm trying to find, and we don't have to counter my screen or anything. I'm trying to find like the specific daguerreotype that I am thinking of uh, when I'm thinking of my reference. And I probably won't be able to find it because it's like in a textbook somewhere that's like burned into my brain. Um, okay. I won't be able to find it. And I wonder too if we went to like black and white or like yeah, sepia sure. tone or something that's like, even if it was like desaturated. Mm-hmm. Uh, black and white. Photo, cool. Let's just see, I will use one of these. And I'll show you, I forget what my prompt was that I actually got wh what I was wanting earlier, but uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that I generated. Using Did you this. download what you got earlier? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the title should be the prompt of the file. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Which, again, is super helpful if you're looking, uh, if Let's you're looking to get back on there and find something that you were working on, take boom. Take a look. Daguerreotype portrait. Okay, I'll just copy that. Let's see what happens. Uh, type portrait of a Japanese yeah. farmer. farmer in the background. Let's see what happens, I guess. Do I need that number in there? Um, maybe, maybe not. Let me see, yeah. It might be too, we can play around with some of the... I'm interested. Maybe taking the photo and the black and white off might help sometimes. Oh yeah, uh, okay. Sometimes I do like to do none and it will kind of like find the best solution for me. You can try that. Okay, all right, we're kind of getting closer. closer. Yeah, we're getting let's, closer. let's take a photo in black and white and yeah. see what happens. Um, I will do that. Cause we could uh, You can X them that. at the bottom too on the prompt. Oh, oh cool, obviously. If it's gonna let me, there we go. Okay, let's just see what that does. Yeah, anytime I'm not getting exactly what I want, I turn like everything off and then like build back on top of it. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to do it, yeah. Just kind of start from square one in a way. Okay. Interesting, okay. interesting. And so same prompts, different results. Different okay, results. let's show us what you found this morning that was looking that worked really well. Okay, so have these. 
There's the daguerreotypes. Yeah, these are a little closer to daguerreotypes. Yep. Usually daguerreotypes were shot in studio. Yep. So there's generally, you see these daguerreotypes and they don't have anything in the background really. It's just like a backdrop or just white you can't really see. Uh, so I wanted to put these farmers in a farm itself, like a working looking farm. And uh, I just wanted to generate these images to see how many farmers I could actually reproduce. And uh, cool, so we have all these farmers, that's great. Again, these aren't real people at all. Uh, they're not using a reference image besides like maybe one of these to generate the others. Um, but uh, yeah, generally they were like at 50%. So if we go back to Premiere, here are my photos that I started with. Again, these are like straight into Premiere. They're too long, um, right? So I need to make them shorter. Cool, we're getting somewhere and I'll make that full screen a little bit just so we can see. No effects or anything, this is just resized. Uh, two frames each. Okay, and then from there, uh, you can start like adding dissolves in there and everything, but what I liked doing here is that because you have uh, a close up of someone, right? Mm -hmm. And what I want, the effect is I want you to feel and see that there are multiple farmers on this farm and they all have uh, a, a part in, in the making of this farm kind of thing. But I don't want to just like focus in on one, I want to show all of them sort of in this animation. So what we did is lined up their eyes using, you know, just like little guides like that. Yep. And, and so, this is kind of what I was mentioning we were talking about stabilizing earlier. Oh, yeah. Is mm -hmm. like focusing on mm -hmm. a point, and that way, regardless of what the generation is, it's going to like stay in line. Yeah, that's a, yeah, another good point. Yeah. Because um, after you do that, you can go to each frame and start to line them up. Yep. And so now you can see their eyes are more or less lined up. You know, they're different images, so some of them are going to do better than others. That's okay. I think that's a, that's actually cool. Uh, we have some like inconsistencies happening there, but for the most part, they're kind of staying within the frame, and then that kind of generates this cool effect where the eyes stay locked, um, but yeah, the people change. That's cool. Uh, and then the final output. Um, I don't have any sound on this one. But I added a little bit of grain. I added some, you know, dirt on of eight millimeter dirt and stuff like that. I love this. Uh, I have said on streams before, chat, and maybe you've heard me. Sometimes to make things better, you have to make them worse. <laughs> and I love that, especially with this workflow, that you're like, okay, like how do I make it feel more authentic or whatever? It's like, oh, you destroy it a little bit more. Yeah. Like you need to mm -hmm. make it look worse. And then pulling that together, putting the noise on top, putting the grain on top, makes it feel like it's found footage and not these individual images that you're throwing together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so this is uh, another way that you can kind of use it and work with it, especially when you have close-ups or things in the scene that you really want to kind of stay put, uh, but you still want some movement there, or yep. some sort of ambiguity there. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. And I know that you have a project that you're working on with this style and this kind of workflow. Uh, we've got like a few minutes left. Do you want to give oh, us a little preview? Sure, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Didn't know we would have time for that. So let Why me see not? here. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love this workflow chat. Let us know what you think about this workflow. Um, it's just so unique and so interesting. And again, like it's just a different way of understanding a story, which I don't see very often. Uh, and so it's cool to see a unique perspective. And you can see, like, all here's all my generations. I haven't nested these at all, actually, in yep. this, except this little last bit. How It's 40-something seconds? Less than a minute? 40 seconds. Let's yeah, hit 49 it. 49 seconds. All right, yeah. chat, let's do it. Japan, 1868. The Boshin Civil War rips the country apart, pitting those who wish to keep Japan closed against those who wish to open the country up to trade with America. A small group of samurai flees to California. They bring with them tea tree seeds and thousands of mulberry trees for cultivating silkworms to produce silk. 
They are the first permanent Japanese settlement in North America. This is their story. So cool. And those, those shots at the end, very um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So thanks for joining us today. That was an incredible workflow. That was awesome. Thanks for having me. Um, any advice to people who are going to hop in and try things in Firefly or AI? Just uh, have that concept, really. Yep. Think of that initial idea and use that as your foundation for everything, all your prompts. Absolutely. So yeah. thanks for joining us today. We'll see you again tomorrow for more content here on Adobe Live and every day from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. into eternity. Bye, everybody. Bye.